Welcome back to the real Berlin. Now, less than 20 years ago, what I'm about to do now would have meant I would have certainly spent a long time behind bars, or even worse, had a bullet in my back. For yes, I'm about to cross the border between East Berlin to West Berlin at the famous, or should that be infamous, Checkpoint Charlie. Wish me luck. Checkpoint Charlie became the symbol of the Cold War, separating the communist East from the West. But I don't need papers or diplomatic immunity because these days that's all history. And if your memories of East Berlin are still rooted in Frederick Forsyth novels or black and white movies from the Cold War era, then get with the programme because these days it's all available in full glorious Technicolor. You can find out all about the checkpoint at the Checkpoint Charlie Museum, where I met with museum director Alexandra Hildebrandt. Alexandra, why did the wall first go up? You know, the GGR government and also the Soviets, they was angry with the people who did want to go out the GGR. And so it, the wall went straight up, and it went up overnight, didn't it? What happened? Over the night, the, the families were separated. The grandmother from grandson, the children from parents, because it was weekend. It was a Sunday. So families were split up because the wall went up and wherever they were at the time, they had to stay there for the rest of their lives. Yes. It's amazing. The museum covers the history of the checkpoint as well as modern day non-violent world struggles. Dotted all around the museum are various forms of transport that people use to get across the border. And it's a real testament to the spirit, resolve and ingenuity of mankind. For example, what we have here is a homemade hot air balloon. It was at the time the biggest ever built in Europe and it got eight people, two families, across the border during the 70s. No, nope, it's not Debbie McGee. One woman in 1969 spent 45 minutes in this converted petrol tank. Now that's tragic. One woman even managed to escape sandwich between two surfboards on top of a Renault. That was in 1987. I think you can get out now. For every tale of triumph, there's one of tragedy, and the museum is a fitting memorial to generations of brave men and women. Modern Germany is renowned for its motor cars. BMW, Audi, Mercedes, Volkswagen, illustrious names that roll off the tongue like a pouting, purring Porsche. So I feel ever so slightly stitched up that today I'm going to be riding in one of these. Not exactly Vorsprung dirt technique, is it? It's actually the iconic East German car, the Trabant. Although, being a bit of a showbiz lovey, I did manage to wangle the stretch version. Get me. The Trabant is a shining example of the nostalgia the city has for all things East. It's summed up by a brilliant Germanic play on words, Ostalgia, Ost for East, and, well, you can figure out the rest for yourselves. You can do a tour of the atmospheric East in a Trabant for 25 euros. My guide was Marcus Muller-Tenkoff. Groovy name, groovy guy. So, Marcus, the Trabant, 50 years old, 0 to 20 in what feels like about five hours, about as much spring on it as a 15-stone rabbit. Uh, <laughs> what is the appeal of going around Berlin and seeing it in one of these? You drive the car by yourself. Yeah. You get live commentary on Berlin, and it's a very unique way to explore Berlin. Uh, well, the history of the car is related to East Germany, of course. Um, about 100,000 cars were produced every year. People waited about 10 to 15 years long to get hold of a car. That's a big waiting list, isn't and, it? And you were able to get it second hand, but then you had to pay more. So, Marcus, what was life really like in the East and the West? How much did it differ in Berlin? Very much. East Berlin was very state-owned, state-planned, but they felt very relaxed, very secure, very safe. West Berlin was like New York in the 80s as well, so very much freedom orientated. That's a fantastic building, isn't it? We are now looking at what we named the French Dome. And what about this one here, right in the center? Well, this is what we named the Concert House, and this is the seat of the Berlin Symphony Orchestra. This is where Leonard Bernstein gave a concert really? when the reunification took place on the 3rd of October 1990. We are now in between East and West Berlin. So this side here yeah. is the so-called uh, West. Okay. And that side is the so-called former East. So and right now we're in kind of no man's land, are we? Exactly. In the olden days. There was one wall here and one wall there. 
So 20 years ago, the idea of driving right down here would have been unthinkable, wouldn't it? Yeah. If you were not an official uh, traveller, you were in the danger of getting shot by the soldier. So with the war gone, how do you know if you're east or west? Easy. Just wait for the lights. Marcus, ample man. Sounds like a superhero. What is he and, and what's all this about? It's the pedestrian traffic light man from the East Germany. And after the reunification of West and East Germany, they want to put away all the signs, all the things from East Germany and want to change him for the West German things. This Ampel man um, is more, has more character, is more popular than the boring West German man. This was an old West German man, then they made a new German man, but it's very boring. And um, This so is our fella here and his, uh, yes, yes. And his mate as well. Much more character. Is that his hand there? Because it looks to me like the green man's flashing, if you catch my drift. What exactly is that there? That's your interesting. That's your arm. <laughs> Are <laughs> you sure? But you can think, or think hey. also other things. <laughs> He's back on all the traffic lights again now, and mm -hmm. everyone wants a piece of him. They want to buy merchandise with him on. Yes, now he's very famous he's, uh, because they like this man and they like also the story. That is, this is the only sign of the East Germany that remained. He's certainly living on strong in your shop because we've got lights here. Uh, we've also got a flip flop for the beach. And uh, what is this? That's a new thing. It's a pasta. And we start <laughs> to opening also Ampelmann restaurant. And so we need the <laughs> pasta and the pizza. So you can get just about anything you want as long as you like it in red or green. Do you know what? I think I better be careful where I go in Berlin today. I might cause a few accidents. Whether it's red lights, green lights or disco lights, Berlin is famous for its nightlife. After dark, the city is nothing short of legendary. Techno or punk, gay or straight, quiet or raucous, surely you'll find one of the five and a half thousand plus clubs, bars, pubs or restaurants to your taste. Five and a half thousand. That's one heck of a pub crawl, isn't it? How long have we got? Five minutes. Five minutes? Better get a move on then. If you're on a Berlin house hunt or business trip, it's good to know where the posh nosh is. Well, I'm here at Fischer's Fritz at the Regent Berlin, one of the top restaurants in the entire city. And I'm here to meet the head chef, who's going to be telling me all about German cuisine. What I didn't know, though, was he was about to make me the new boy in the kitchen. So, Christian, we've got fish and chips and steak and kidney pie in the UK. What have the Germans got? Well, we have bratwurst and sauerkraut, as you know. <laughs> it's high culture. But in all seriousness, there must be some traditional German fare. Well, um, we have um, some kind of braised beef, braised pork. We have, of course, sauerkraut, nice sauerkraut dishes. We have a lot of uh, soups. Now, you're a head chef in a top restaurant. Presumably, you do international cuisine here. Yes, we go for international cuisine, specialized on seafood mainly, based on the French cuisine. And what I want you to do today is a turbot. Here we have a nice piece of turbot. So you want me to prepare this, OK? Yes, please. So you <laughs> take off the, the head of the fish. We'll look at an artist at work. And then you cut a piece like this. OK. So I give you this instrument now. <laughs> this instrument, OK. There we go. I don't know what we're going to do Put some olive oil in the pen. OK. And it goes. And here we go. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah, How long has this got to cook for? Well, up to seven minutes. Now, is this, uh, is this doing all right, is it? This is wonderful. Yeah, OK. I'm just going to do that because it just looks good. There we go. That should help. I think we have to put it a little bit in the oven, if you don't mind. And now, my dear friend. Yes? You're going to dress in this way the plate. You want me to create that? Yes, sir. I wish you good luck. Waiting for you in the restaurant. Oh, good. Excellent. You just take it easy bye then, bye. Chris. Can I have that back? Just a... All right, he's gone. OK, um, I guess then we we'll need to use a bit of this. Excuse fingers. <laughs> Blimey. I've made a complete pig's ear of it already. It's a bit like the Generation game, this, isn't it? Good game, good game. All right, my labs. A little bit of sauce on the top here. Just do a little bit of that. It's a masterpiece. There goes the towel. Bob's your uncle. I'm laughing. <clears throat> there we go, sir. I think you'll find this very much to your liking. <clears throat> so I'm going to taste it now. Jolly good. We'll see. Does sir like? Hmm. Problem? Take the white jacket out, please. You're not happy? Take the white jacket out. You have to wear this black jacket now because you are now the head chef. Oh! <laughs> I'm not worthy. You're I'm not, not worthy. Of course you're not worthy. <laughs> I knew you'd come around to my way of thinking. Chris, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you. 
Now, I don't know how much I'm going to be earning in my new role as head chef, but what I can tell you is a few other average salaries here in Germany. Now, a checkout worker could expect to earn about 12,000 euros a year, a waiter, 15,000, a teacher, 32,400. A junior doctor would get about 40,000 euros a year, and a newly qualified lawyer would start on 30,000 euros a year, although this could double depending on the size of the firm. Cliché or not, there really is something for everyone in Berlin. Bars and pubs are slightly spread out, so you'll need a plan of attack. One of the hottest tickets in town is the arty and bohemian Prenzlauerberg district, and a great place to enjoy the no-limit opening hours. But if you really want your night to end on a high, take yourself off to Mitter. Right now, I'm on the 16th floor of an old tower block right in the heart of the city. Now, in the early 60s, this was the premises of the CIA, who used to run covert operations here because it had such fantastic panoramic views of the whole of Berlin, including Checkpoint Charlie. Well, after the CIA left, it became a bar, a club, and a restaurant. These days, it's all three. It's a sophisticated little haunt called Solar, and at 60 meters above the ground, it really is experiencing the high life. The city's social life is helping to attract young and affluent professionals to Berlin. Having struggled a bit financially after the 1990 reunification, Berlin is booming. But if all that seems a little bit la-di-da, you can always come to a place like this. Paulana's, a good old-fashioned German restaurant and beer hall where drinks are for men. And I've lined up the specialities here. Feast your eyes on this. This is a Berliner Weisser Grown. It's a beer with green stuff in it and a straw. And it tastes like a soft drink. No thanks. Over here we've got a Berliner Weisser Rot, which again is a beer. This time it tastes slightly more like beer, but it's got red stuff in it and a bit of froth and again a straw. No thanks. But don't worry, I've got it covered because I've also ordered one of these babies. Oh yes, a good old traditional style of German ale. Have it. Yes, it was the mysterious Joel Grey, master of ceremonies in the film Cabaret, who said, Inside it is so hot that every night we face a battle to keep the girls from losing all of their clothing. So don't go away, who knows? Tonight we may lose the battle. I can honestly say I hope my wife is not watching this. Come on to the Cabaret, my friends. Actually, that's the last curtain call for part two. See you after this break.